a talk or a stand-up comedy set or graffiti or a dance. I am Laura Fitton. Uh, I do often get referred to to my face as Pistachio, like people, hey, Pistachio, what's up? Because that's my Twitter handle. I wrote Twitter for Dummies. I started a Twitter-related startup called 140.com. And I am now the inbound marketing evangelist for HubSpot, who acquired 140 last August. You know, I get asked a lot, okay, your core thing about Twitter is just make yourself useful. What are some examples? How can I be useful? And I'd say the, the kind of lowest common denominator here, the simplest thing you could do, even if you're promoting your own stuff, is just try and turn it around and make it a little bit more about the reader than it is about you. So say you're promoting your own blog and you could put up the title of the blog and a link to the post, or you could ask the reader a provocative question about themselves that has to do with the topic of the post. You could blurb the most catchy comment from the post and a link. Or you could cite a really interesting piece of, you know, compelling piece of data that's in the post and then the link. Those are three examples of a way that I'm taking, you know, I'm promoting myself, I'm promoting my post, but I'm making a little bit more about the reader than it is about my post. And if they choose to click through and read because I've caught their attention, then I've done my job well by making it more about them and, and trying to actually be useful to them. So the reality for the small business owner is that they don't have a ton of time to learn all this stuff and even once they do they don't have a ton of time to be updating it all day long um, so sitting back and getting to some of the core things about their business where they know they're solving people's problems and adding value to people's lives um, at HubSpot, Gary Vaynerchuk's one of our advisors, and I love, love, love to quote what he said about, you know, our grandparents would be way better at social media than we are because they owned these small shops in small towns, and the only way to be an effective business person was to be known as the go-to source for answers to problems, right? So falling back on that kind of old school expertise, helpfulness, customer service, establishing a reputation, and then also remembering, you know, I think most small businesses are very familiar at this point with using tools like an email monthly newsletter to engage people. What's cool about Twitter versus something like that is you can put a ton more offers out there on a frequent, regular basis without filling up somebody's inbox and pissing them off. I mean, you couldn't send a newsletter more than once a month. But with tweets, you can put, you know, five to ten offerings out there a day. And as long as they're kind of cool and kind of interesting, and I think the best example of this ever is the bakery that tweets when the cookies come out of the oven so everybody can come in and buy hot cookies like win 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 everybody wins on that one so you know one of the things that is an opportunity for a company is to develop some kind of personality on twitter and obviously you want to scale your approach to that based on your resources right if you're a huge brand like pepsi they actually go to the extent of literally casting the employee who's going to staff the account Right? Are they funny? Are they a good writer? Can they write ad quality copy for that account? All the way down to a small business owner who's really having to do it for themselves and their best option is going to be to be as authentically them as they possibly can. So they're not constantly having to think, well, how am I going to make it sound like this voice? Right? Um, you know, Carl's Jr. chose to have a very specific voice on their tweets, but again, they had a very talented person who could be funny and be that personality and develop that character. Um, I'd say authenticity is a safer bet than character development. There's another very early on example of Twitter um, when the show Robinson Crusoe came out like four years ago. They had these scripted, like, by the writers of the series tweets to send out, and the poor guy from the agency was walking around all weekend because we didn't have scheduling tools yet, pulling the paper out of his pocket and sending the tweet. They were perfectly in character, and it was the worst Twitter account ever because it wasn't engaging anybody, it wasn't talking to anybody, he wasn't even permitted to reply to people, right? So don't worry too much about striking the perfect voice. Worry a bit more about what's going to be scalable for you and yet accessible enough that it's going to be interesting to the reader. Um, that emotional connection, that discovery that I am not alone, that discovery that we have something in common is incredibly sticky and powerful. And it's not something that every single company or every single brand needs to do. There are other ways to deliver value. Um, again, one of the very early, very successful accounts, Dell Outlet, they just had great coupons. People love great coupons. They didn't have touchy-feely conversation and, you know, let me talk about your emotions. It was like, let me just stimulate your emotions directly by giving you 30% off the computer you already want. 
um, when you look at the ratio of how many computers they sold to like when they had like 300 followers on the account, it was very clear. People were grabbing those tweets and sending it out on email, calling friends, telling people for the next 30 minutes you can get that computer for 70% of the normal cost. People jump on stuff like that. They get excited. So that's, you know, that's still emotion.